Hey y'all, welcome to Mom2 Cocktail Hour. Um, it's Friday afternoon, and uh, if you're not thinking about drinking, you could start thinking about drinking. <laughs> um, my name is Deborah Mobies. Uh, my account is whipstitch, whip.stitch, here on Instagram, and my blog over at whipstitch.com. Um, and I write mostly about sewing, but my husband and I also do a lot of traveling. Um, so we've recently come back from Havana, Cuba, which was, I highly recommend traveling to Cuba with your significant other or your bestest bestie. Um, it was a really complicated place. Uh, it invited a lot of conversations about every topic under the sun because it was like, two different islands happening at the same time. It was sort of magical, but it was also really complicated and it was hot and it was humid and it was beautiful and it was exotic, but it was also historical and political and um, there was a lot going on there. Uh, and I will say, if you ever find yourself a la playa and Havana um, and someone finds out that you know how to salsa, you will end up dancing with strangers down the beach, which is pretty great. Um, while we were there, hi you guys, Laura's here. Um, while we were there, we took more than one mojito lesson because if you're ever gonna learn to make a mojito, Havana's the place to do it. Um, so today, I'm going to spend the next, I don't know, 15 or 20 minutes with you uh, here in our basement bar showing you exactly how we learned to make mojitos the Cuban way. Uh, Laura wants to come over to my house. I want you to come. We will bake and we will have cocktails and it will be magic. So, um, so I'm all set up here. I actually set up for two different cocktails, our two favorite hot weather cocktails. Um, the first is a mojito, but I'm gonna make it spicy because that's what I like. I really like this recipe a lot um, because it doesn't require measurements. And the way we learned, we had more than one mojito lesson while we were there. Uh, and the one that we liked best was in a little tiny town um, at the Ahiaco Cafe, which is close to where Hemingway did a lot of his writing. Um, and the bartender there taught us to make our mojitos using proportions rather than measurements. So you didn't need a jigger, um, you didn't need tablespoons, right? So it was me and my husband, there he is, at Dadcation on the IG. Um, he will be quality control this evening. Um, I'm checking to make sure that I remember <laughs> I remember how to do this right. So, um, what I liked about the way they made these was uh, everything was a finger or two fingers worth in the bottom of your glass, um, which is nice when you wanna make maybe a larger, a larger cocktail. Uh, I'm not gonna do 32 ounces of mojitos right now, I'm just gonna do 16. I'm gonna start, because I'm making it a spicy mojito, I'm gonna start with my favorite hot honey. Um, it's honey infused with chilies and you can get it on the internet. Uh, oh, you're getting lots of hellos. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, I know Santa brought this to me because I put it in my stocking myself, pro tip. Um, and it's amazing. So I'm gonna start with whatever your sweetener is. You can also use simple syrup, but I strongly recommend the localist, local honey you can get. And I'm gonna squeeze that into the bottom of my glass, about a finger's worth in the bottom of my glass. And then I'm gonna come in and I'm gonna add some lime juice, same amount of lime juice, so equal parts honey and lime juice. This is actually, um, we have a gallon jug of key lime juice, because as you do. Um, so this is key lime juice. It's a little bit more mild. Hi, Carrie. Um, it's a little bit more mild flavored, a little less uh, tart than um, like a regular lime juice would be. But I'm gonna add just a little bit more than a finger's worth, because I do, I do like it tart. And uh, next, we're gonna use mint. Ah, um, which smells a little bit better than that that cigar, but uh, mm -hmm. you know, when Sorry. you're having mojitos. Um, so here's the big lesson that we got when we were at the Ahiaco Cafe, which was that everybody muddles the mint leaves, but most of the volatile oils are in the mint stem. And so they taught us to put our mint in leaves up and then muddle from the bottom up. So we have this little muddler, which I'll be honest, looks a lot to me like a toy baseball bat, which if your kids have like a little tiny baseball bat and you're in the mood for cocktails, I see nothing wrong, nothing wrong with raiding their toy box. Um, so I'm muddling by squashing the stems as I go down. 
Uh, Sherry thinks reading the toy box is funny. It mm. is. And also practical. Very practical. Um, so I'm muddling by squashing the stems to release the volatile oils. The other thing it's doing in the bottom, and the guy doesn't say this, but I, I'm pretty sure I'm right about this, is it blends the acid of the lime juice with the honey, so the honey kind of dissolves a little bit, um, which means that I don't have to make sure that my lime juice is room temperature. I can get it right out of the fridge and just get going on it. So I'm going to squash these. Oh my gosh. Y'all should smell this. It smells, <laughs> smells good. I feel a little bit like Ina Garten. It's Jeffrey's birthday, so we're making mojitos. Um, but for real, you should be here and smell this. All right, so I've muddled my stems. I've really gotten them in there. And then we add the rum. And um, so a little bit of especial here. Any rum will do. Um, and they said, all right, so they said in our lesson, a finger's worth of honey, a finger's worth of lime, and then two fingers of rum, but keep on pouring. Uh, so if you want to make the most authentic mojito, you can. You just keep pouring. And then, oh, I forgot to get the ice. Will you get me the ice cubes? No. Um, and then you fill it way to the top with ice cubes and top it off. They topped it off with still water. I like fizzy water. Um, I super like the really fizzy water. Uh, so we've got our own just club soda, like carbonated water, that we're going to throw on top to dilute it a little bit. And the bartender in Havana strongly recommended at that point, add a little more rum. So a little fizzy water goes in to mix it all up. Give it a nice stir. And give it another leaf. And then find out how you did. Are you ready? Sure. All right. Mmm. <laughs> Very good. I would make it a little stronger, but uh, it's very good. See, not enough rum, right? The guy's not rum. <clears throat> All right, I'm going to try that too. It's nice and uh, tart. Minty. I like, I like it tart. So this is where you adjust the taste. Um, if you have a simple syrup, which you can buy by the bottle, it's just sugar that's been melted in water, like a simple syrup. Um, it's, it lets you adjust the sweetness really well um, if your drink is already iced and you don't want your honey to like congeal and be weird. Um, I like the spiciness. The heavier you go with the spicy chili honey, the spicier it's going to be. And you can put a little like chili salt around the rim if you want to get fancy. Um, or you can just drink it really fast. So there's that. All right. I see a bunch of you were here. Yay! A little hard eyes and little happiness. Laura says it looks so good. That's because it is good, Laura. <laughs> so um, we will see you soon. Get over, get over here. All right, so spicy mojito. That is my number one go-to beverage for hot weather. But my number two go-to beverage for hot weather is a really delicious Pim's cup. Uh, the other place, the two of us, <laughs> you can't see him nodding, but you should, <laughs> nodding vigorously. Um, our other favorite city to visit, I really think that my husband has been there more than 30 times. I've been there at least a dozen, is New Orleans. Uh, it used to be a short flight used to be a short flight from where we live in Atlanta um, and you head out to the quarter at you know brunch time and have yourself a delicious Pim's cup to start your day it is refreshing uh, they're really easy to make and we have a little bit of a tweak that we do here at our house so I'm gonna show you how we do it and this time I am gonna make it in the French press uh, you can get an inexpensive French press for like $11 online if you're not concerned about the quality of the coffee like you can get a really nice one if you care about the coffee but if you're just planning on putting uh, fruits or vegetables in the bottom and <laughs> smooshing them down with an alcoholic beverage with a cocktail um, an inexpensive french press works great it also just happens to be exactly 32 ounces which means it's beverages for two so i'm going to make a double pim's cup here while we still have a little bit of time so that as we head into the hot weather you guys have two excellent cocktail recipes on Friday evenings. Uh, we will start this one. You actually, uh, you don't. I use measurements for this one. Very generous, sloppy measurements. So we've got a jigger. That's what that's called. It's called a jigger. I had to look it up. Um, and I'm going to put in a couple of jiggers of Pim's. Pim's is a liqueur for which we have to go to the liqueur store. Um, a lot of states won't let you buy that online. Um, but any... Good quality liquor store is going to have some pins there. 
Hi, you guys. Hi, Sherry. Hi, Katie. Yay. Um, any good quality liquor store is going to have Pims. Um, we have seen a number of different recipes for this because we looked it up after going to Napoleon House in New Orleans. Um, and I've seen a lot of different recipes, and some of them are like New Orleans style, and some of them are English style, whatever. Um, and this is really none of those. It just has a lot of stuff in it that's yummy. Uh, so ours isn't just Pims, it's also gin, um, which I like a lot. I did one jigger of Pims per cocktail, and I'm gonna do two jiggers of gin per cocktail. So four into my French press here. It's hard to talk and count at the same time, <laughs> especially at this point on a Friday. Um, it is very easy to go really hard on a Pim's cup and come in a little hotter than you planned, um, which is why I do the measurements. Otherwise, it's got such a light, refreshing flavor. Um, hi there. Yay. Oh, thanks. You love my sweater. It's a good color. It's my signature color. Mm -hmm. I feel like it's important to have a signature color and run toward it, um, especially when your husband says, but yellow is your signature color. You should wear that. So, all right. One jigger pims, two jiggers of gin for each serving that we're doing here. Just a splash of pechos. This is a, a bitter that you see all the time. I don't really know what that is. I don't know what that means. I just know that people use it and they say it's amazing. So I'm gonna put in a splash of bitters and enjoy it. And then a lot of the recipes that I've seen are lemonade and Sprite. And I think we can do better than that. So we're gonna do the juice of two lemons, which I'm just like Ina, I've already juiced. I've already juiced. It's like I knew you guys were coming. Juice of two lemons right there in the bottom because I like it tart, delicious. And then ginger beer. And um, we get these little bitty like pony cans. I don't know what you call them, the tiny, tiny cans. So we're gonna do one can of ginger beer per cocktail. Pour that into. And then another. So between the lemons and the ginger beer, um, it gets, it's kind of spicy, um, but it gives it a nice round balance between sweet and tart and spicy. And then I put in a ton of ice in the glasses. My ice is frozen together, you guys. So it's all like this mountain, this mountain of ice in this bowl. Um, a ton of ice in the glasses. And then I'm gonna do a little bit of soda water in the cocktail just to lighten it up and balance it out. And then we will garnish because there really should be more times in your life where you can use the word garnish. Uh, we're gonna garnish with a couple of, uh, yeah, I'm just gonna use the end of the sister. Mm -mm. And you'll notice I didn't use any sweetener. Oh. And, oh, but I used a lot of enthusiasm. Um, <laughs> I didn't use any sweetener because I, we, both of us really like it on the less sweet side. But you totally can add some sweetener in there. We're going to garnish with some cucumber wedges. And then we're going to hand it off and see how we did. <laughs> Delicious! You're not going to French press it? I'm not going to French press it this time. Mm. I'm just going to use the big container. It's just like Napoleon House, uh, but less dinky. <laughs> Yeah, I like that ginger beer a lot better and um, because it has, it is good, um, it has a little more kick to it than the idea of using lemonade and Sprite, which is overpoweringly sweet. Like I really wanna taste the Pims, I really wanna get just a little hint of the gin, that like juniper under, under flavor, um, but mostly it tastes like ginger beer and lemon, so it's, it's delicious, yay! It, cheers to you. Yeah, that's right. We should. Where's the other one? I've lost the spicy. Uh, <laughs> all right. Thanks for being here, you guys. Into the weekend. Cheers. Have fun making cocktails. Uh, I didn't see any questions, so have fun drinking, you guys. Thanks for being here. Thanks for being a uh, part of the Mom2 community. Thanks for letting me come and take 20 minutes of your day and enjoy the rest of your weekend. Bye, you guys. <laughs> Cute.